Hello, my name is Tom Hastings. I'm a lecturer in dance at London Contemporary Dance School and a writer based in London. I'm here to talk about pedestrian movement in contemporary dance. We often think about everyday, ordinary kinds of movement alongside technique when we think about contemporary dance. So what do we mean by pedestrian? Pedestrian refers to an everyday commonplace activity, often in public, such as walking down the street or going for a run or eating a sandwich or using a wheelchair. And it also describes the quality of movement, movement that is prosaic or dull or uninspired even, boring. So the more contemporary dance you see, the more you begin to notice everyday kinds of movement incorporated into the dance. For example, I saw Giselle Vian's crowd at Sadler's Wells in 2019. This dance features a group of performers wearing everyday clothing, walking around the stage slowly. They appear to be tipsy or high. And as I watch the performance, I forget that I'm at Sadler's Wells and I, I could be in a forest or under Southwark Bridge on the River Thames. Pedestrian movement in this work gets us to think about the relationship between dance and social life. Nonetheless, the movements we see are stylized and they have a long history in dance. So I want to talk about the history of pedestrian movement in dance and this will lead us back into the present. So, for example, in the court dances of Louis XIV, codified movement often reflected the manners of the nobility. Or, in the history of romantic and classical ballet, for example, in the Ballet Giselle, naturalistic movement such as walking served to distinguish between different classes. So, for example, the peasants in Giselle we see them talking, chatting, walking, and that naturalistic attitude serves to distinguish them from the nobility, from Prince Albrecht. Going forwards, if we look at modern dance in New York, in the work of Martha Graham, Alvin Ailey and others, we still find walking, albeit in a, a stylized form. And these choreographers were interested in referencing the everyday, but in doing so, they absorbed the everyday into the value system of dance. Though we see pedestrian forms of moving, such as walking, this is very much a dance work. In the 1960s in New York, we have the birth of what gets called postmodern dance with the Judson Dance Theatre. The Judson Dance Theatre was a collective of dancers, musicians, artists, sculptors who are challenging the separation between the arts. Dancers such as Yvonne Rayner and Steve Paxton who trained with the likes of Martha Graham or Merce Cunningham set about rejecting their dance training, expanding the medium of dance. And how did they do this? By incorporating everyday forms of movement, such as walking, running, or even eating a sandwich. In 1965, Yvonne Rayner, as part of an essay, famously published the No Manifesto. And I'll just read a short quotation. No to spectacle, no to virtuosity, no to transformations and magic and make-believe, no to the glamour and transcendency of the star image. So, from this manifesto, you can see that these avant-garde performers were challenging the system of dance. They sought to open dance up to forms of social life. And we can see that gesture reflected in Giselle Vian's crowd. So by studying the histories of contemporary dance, we can begin to understand how dance interacts with society and how that relationship changes across time. Approaching the history of postmodern and contemporary dance from an oppositional angle, we can begin to ask whose reality is being represented in the performance. Because pedestrian movement is never 
natural or neutral, it's always shaped by the social. We can begin to read and engage with performance in relation to issues around, for instance, gender, sexuality and race. And this can then lead us to re-examine histories of dance in light of social issues. For example, if we stay in New York of the 1960s, one might travel uptown from the Judson Dance Theatre to Harlem. We could think about the African-American artist Adrian Piper's street performance series 1970 to 73, Catalysis. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. I want you to look at this image and think about how is the artist positioned in relation to the passers-by around her? How are they relating to each other? What does this image tell us about the gaze? What is the function of pedestrian movement walking in this image? I think it's worth thinking about the context in which this performance is happening. We're not sitting in a black box theatre here, we're on the street. And as you can see, the artist is doing the everyday movement of walking. But she's doing this while wearing a shirt that has the slogan wet paint on it. And I want you to think, what does the slogan wet paint make you think about? Pause the video now. To me, it makes me think about the relation between not touching and wanting to touch, not looking and wanting to look. What Piper does in this performance is to use the everyday critically. She gets us to think about the dynamics of looking and being looked at through her movement. And this is a very different use of pedestrian movement from the kind we saw with the Judson Dance Theatre. Now, staying in Harlem, we could also look to the ballroom scene in which queer people of colour performed on the catwalk, as later represented in Paris's Burning. And this is a very different kind of walking again from the Judson Dance Theatre. So I think we always need to think about the wider picture and question the dominant history that we have. In another performance in the Catalysis series, you can see Piper sitting in what looks like a bus riding the streets of Manhattan. Now, you can see that her position is very ordinary. She seems uninterested in her surroundings and sitting casually, except she has a big hot towel stuffed into her mouth. Again, this is an intervention into the everyday. And this performance takes the everyday and it makes it unfamiliar. And in doing so, it gets us to think about everyday movements, such as walking and running. And if you think about the audience of this image, which was distributed through an emerging gallery network in New York, often it would be a white middle-class audience consuming these images. So the effect of this image of pedestrian movement is to get us to think about a reality of someone unlike us or different from us. And so pedestrian movement, precisely because of its everyday nature, is a great way for artists to challenge our perceptions about social reality. And this legacy informs a work like Giselle Vian's Crowd. Also in the contemporary, one might think of a work like Maria Hassabi's Plastic, which took place at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 2016. Here, performers lie on the stairwell in the museum outside of the gallery room. It's very unclear to the passers-by what exactly is going on. If you look at this image, you might begin to question who is the subject of this performance? Who is the performer and who is the audience? Pedestrian movement is being deployed in a different way here. Its purpose is to get us to think about the separation of performer and audience. Or we could look at the American artist William Popel, who sometimes goes by the name the friendliest black artist in America. Over the last few decades, Pope L has conducted what he calls the Cruel series, which sees him often getting from point A to point B in Manhattan by crueling. 
like Piper, Pope Earl gets us to think about how we inhabit social space. And the invisible hierarchies that govern social spaces, such as the street. The contemporary theorist Sarah Ahmed provides a useful framework for thinking about Piper's and Pope Earl's performances. Ahmed suggests that the majority of people experience social space as a kind of flow, whereas others might experience obstacles to flow that are not visible to the majority. So Ahmed suggests that there is a need to become the blockage points in order to bring them into visibility. This describes the effects of Popel's and Piper's performances. We've now thought about pedestrian movement in the history of dance in order to reflect on everyday movement in contemporary dance. Now in closing, I want to suggest that this history can be read in contemporary dance itself in the form of the dance. For example, the contemporary choreographer Trajal Harrell has a work called 20 Looks or Paris is Burning at the Judson Church in which they imagine a mashup between the ballroom scene of Harlem and the avant-garde performance scene of the Judson Dance Theatre. 20 Looks involves lots of costume changes and walking around the performance area. Bell's choreography demonstrates how histories of the contemporary can be explored in the form of the dance itself. This kind of work is fascinating because it gets us to reflect on the longer histories of pedestrian movement. In closing, we can say that pedestrian movement gets us to think about the relationship between contemporary dance and the broader society and allows us to reflect on social issues in dance. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to see more of our tutorial shorts.